Hello, it's me, Miss V, and welcome back to another video. I'm so happy to have y'all here. And today we're going to be talking about the six properties of a parallelogram. So for those of you who don't know what a parallelogram is, I'll draw it on my screen in a moment. But if this is what you're looking for and you enjoy watching my videos, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the like button so I can continue to produce more content for y'all. The more awareness and people that I have watching my channel, the better it is because the more people I can reach and actually teach about geometry, which is essentially all I want to do. Right now, it's mostly been my students, which I'm super, super grateful for. I love them all so much. But I also want to reach other students. So go ahead and pass this video along to everybody so that I can help as many kids as I can. So like I said, without further ado, today we're going to be talking about the properties of parallelograms. parallelograms. I love that word. It's such a cool word. Okay. So parallelogram, as y'all know, may know or may not know, is a quadrilateral. So a quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. Let's see how nice this parallelogram comes out. Oh, it actually came out decent, okay. So it's a four-sided shape where the opposite sides are parallel to each other. So that little marking that I'm doing on my screen right now that looks like a little arrow, this little marking means parallel, okay? Uh, so whenever you see that on a test or on a, a worksheet, whatever, that means parallel, okay? So these two sides are parallel to each other and these two sides are parallel to each other. So let's put some letters on this parallelogram. Okay. So first property is that the opposite sides are not only parallel to each other, but they are also congruent to each other. Okay. So are congruent to each other. Okay. So this side over here, BC is congruent to AD. And I'm going to go ahead and do that marking on top in pink. So congruent marking is a straight line, parallelogram, a parallelogram. Parallel marking is the little arrows, okay? So these are also congruent. The second property is that the opposite angles, opposite angles are also congruent to each other. Uh, congruent to each other. So if I were to, and the opposite angles are the ones that are directly across from each other, okay? So for example, A, C, A and C, those are opposite angles and B and D, those are opposite angles. So let me pick some other colors on here. This angle A is congruent to this angle C and this angle B is congruent to this angle D if we have a parallelogram, okay? Property number two. Property number three is that these two angles, orange and green, these are called consecutive angles in a parallelogram. So the consecutive angles are supplementary, okay? If you don't remember what supplementary means, it means that Angle A plus angle D equals 180 degrees. Okay, so supplementary means that when you add up the angles, they're equal to 180. Okay, so in this case, A plus D is 180. We also have D plus C is 180. Consecutive just means two angles back to back. So A, A D, those are back to back. D, C, those are back to back. C, B, those are back to back. And B, A, those are back to back. Okay, so opposite angles, congruent. Consecutive angles, supplementary, okay? Property number four is that if we have one of them being a right angle, so for example, if this angle here were 90 degrees, that means the opposite angle would also have to be 90 degrees, right? Because they're congruent. But now we also know that the consecutive angle, these two have to add up to 180. And if this one is 90, the only option for this one is to be 90 because only 90 plus 90 is 180. So if one angle is a right angle, then, oh, let me actually write that in caps, then 
all the angles are right angles. Okay. And if we have all the angles being right angles, then technically that parallelogram could also be called a rectangle. So interesting thing, interesting thing about quadrilaterals is that they can be named multiple things. So like a square could also be considered a rectangle. However, a rectangle could never be considered a square, but a rectangle could also be considered a parallelogram. So very fun stuff, all right? Property number five is talking about the diagonals of a parallelogram, okay? So the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect, parallelogram bisect, each other, okay? I'm gonna draw that on the picture right now. So a diagonal, let's use this color. No, underline diagonal in that color. So y'all know that's what I was talking about. So a diagonal is basically a segment connecting the opposite points of your parallelogram. So B connected to D and A connected to C, okay? So in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other, okay? Which means that this diagonal here, AC, is cutting BD in half into two equal pieces, okay? So that means this segment is congruent to this segment, okay? Now, that is also true. Uh, da, 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 let's use this color. Now, BD is also cutting AC in half. It's cutting that into two equal pieces or bisecting that segment, okay? But notice here, it does not mean that these diagonals are the same exact size, okay? The diagonals don't have to be the same length. Like for example, this could be six and six, and this right here in green could be five and five, okay? You're still, it's, the diagonals are still bisecting each other, but notice six and six, this diagonal measures 12, Whereas this one, five plus five, this diagonal measures 10, okay? So it doesn't mean that the diagonals are the same size. It, ju it just means that they're cutting each other in half, okay? And property number six, let me look at my nose. Ah, okay. So now from here, we can say that each of these diagonals separates the, the whole triangle itself into two, two congruent triangles, okay? So essentially this triangle A, D, B, this triangle right here, A, D, B, is congruent to this triangle C, B, D, okay? That property probably isn't gonna be used very often, but I'll write it down for you guys. So diagonals create congruent triangles, okay? This may only be used if you're trying to prove something specifically, like maybe, hey, prove that uh, BC is congruent to AD, and then they'll say, uh, this is the diagonal of some kind of quadrilateral. So they won't necessarily tell you it's a parallelogram, but they want you to prove that these are congruent. Okay, so that's essentially what that would be used for, okay? So these over here are the six properties of your parallelogram. As you guys know, if you need to go back throughout the video to pause and write something down, please feel free to. You guys are obviously welcome to do that. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a huge thumbs up and click on that subscribe button down below. Just click it over and over and over again until you're subscribed forever and ever. And I will see you guys in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, bye, y'all.